think in terms of understanding the depth of the trend, um, you have to understand where these pressures are coming from for investors as regards ESG. Um, why there's been a tripling of, of responsible investor headcount at most investment managers over the last 18 months. Um, I think that comes down to three three main things from our conversations with the buy side. Um, and, and they vary in their importance depending on which investment manager you're talking to. So firstly, there's some components of moral obligation. Um, they really do feel this is the thing that the world needs to do in order to, to meet its environmental um, obligations and to uh, and to operate sustainably because that's the right way for societies to operate. Uh, secondly, asset owners, so their pension fund and insurer clients uh, are demanding it from investment managers. So they want them to demonstrate how they're integrating ESG into their portfolios and how they're acting as stewards um, and actively engaging investee companies. And you won't capture many mandates uh, without a 20 minute discussion about ESG as an investment manager currently. I think the last part is um, is investors looking at ESG as a lens to uncover uh, unpriced pots of um, risk and reward. So the fundamental question is there, how well positioned is this company for the world of, of, of five years time in the jurisdictions in which they operate? Um, and, and the coming regulation and macro trends within those industries and, and geographies. So for most sustainable energy companies, notwithstanding some fairly major questions about the fundamental makeup of the grid in 15 years time, um, I think the outlook is pretty positive. There's certainly been um, well, there's obviously been outperformance in, in, in highly rated ESG companies over the last three years. I think early on, that was a, a question of, of correlation rather than causation, where you had high performing management teams would generally do a good job across um, across the different parts of their business. And one part of that for for, um, for those management teams was ESG. Um, so if you were looking after that properly, probably lots of other parts of your strategy were in check also. Uh, I think what you've seen in the last three years, or sorry, perhaps the last 18 months, is um, is sustainability as a trend for investors, just as uh, they've got behind other trends in the past. Um, they like the prospects of companies that have got a significant sustainable component to what they do. I think you've seen impressive valuations for the likes of Foresight and uh, Oakley um, in terms of recent IPOs. And I think um, that is set to continue though i wonder if if we'll see it come off a little bit from the peaks it's been at perhaps after cop this year um some of the some of the heat might come out of the market slightly but are we going to see a, a, a bursting no um i don't think so so communication is is where Cillian differs from other sustainability consultancies um of course we do all of the technical work so strategy net zero operationalization scenario analysis reporting etc cetera, etc cetera. but the other half of our business is in communications um in purely financial terms operating responsibly costs money and in exchange for that you get positive externalities outside of the company um, but there's now the opportunity to turn that effort and and money and time into strategic value and the way you do that is through proper communication so if you look at um, your audiences investors uh, internal audiences customers and the general public all of they have different and important needs when it comes to what they expect of you uh, in sustainability terms. And these are shifting quite a lot. If you communicate your efforts properly to them, you can create strategic value from all the effort you're putting into these sustainability initiatives. So I think a lot of sustainable energy companies are quite surprised when they come to reporting and find out that they aren't given the, the scores or, or accolades that they quite rightly deserve. And that's because unfortunately there is more to um, to being recognized as an ESG leader than, than operating in sustainable energy. Um, there's lots of ways through that and, and, and a big component of it is, is disclosure. And that's certainly something that we, we help with. Um, the other element to be thinking about at the moment is all the upcoming regulation that has the potential to significantly affect cost of capital, particularly for sustainable energy companies. So you have um, TCFD, the taxonomy uh, and the implications of SFDR, some of which I'm sure um, people will have heard of, but all of which are quite complicated and, and still being interpreted by most of the market. Um, getting those right will be a big opportunity for companies, particularly those um, looking to secure investment over the next two years.
so much. Um, I think session four in particular uh, around steel, cement, and, and mobility and shipping. So the the hard to decarbonize um, sectors that we really need to focus on next, and uh, the hydrogen um, session will also be interesting because that's a focus for us in the coming years.